It's High Noon with David. He's gone and fallen in love with Jesus and bringing boldness to the body of Christ. Here's David. Hi. Welcome to High Noon with David. This is show number 267. Here to bring you a gift. Gift of boldness. I'm talking to two of you. Those of you that are about to become believers. Those of you that already are and you're hungry for more. Now last week I was going to share out of Matthew 5 and I never got to it. And I said, well, this coming week, this next week, I'm going to share out of it. But I, I, I want to challenge you something. Your church, your denomination, your religious organization, if people aren't coming to you saying, I'm here to be healed. I heard there's people getting healed here. I'm here to be saved. I, I, I heard people are getting saved here. I'm here to be filled with Holy Ghost because I heard people are being filled with Holy Ghost and speaking in unknown tongues here. I'm here to get delivered from demons because I hear people around this church get delivered from demons. If that's not happening, you're in a dead church. I don't give a flying rat's behind. If you can quote scripture right and left and y'all get together and hear the pastor or the teacher and, and oh, that is so good, and you leave out of there and nothing happened. There was no encounter with God. People didn't get hands laid on them. People did not get ministered to. You're in a dead church. There's plenty of dead churches that can quote scripture and talk about how they believe in Calvinism or Methodism or whether you sprinkle a duck or a duck or whether your women can preach or they can't preach. Can you wear makeup? Can you cut your hair? Listen, I know some of the most precious Pentecostals on the planet Earth, but my skirt's too short and I wear too much makeup. And I cut my hair all off. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't care who you are, you can be religious. The word says your tradition has made the word of non effect. So I'm going to talk to you today about a woman with an issue of blood. She broke all the norms, she broke all the rules. She did what she wasn't supposed to do. Hey, I'm just, I'm going to be blunt with you where I am. My heart is, I'm clear in a corner of my property to build a small barn that will hold two horses. We'll build out a concrete block and concrete and steel so it won't rot on me. And when I leave planet Earth, if Jesus hadn't come back, my grandkids can have it or, who, or my daughter or whoever, and they won't have a bunch of maintenance to do on it. I love, I'm a carpenter. I love wood, but wood will rot on you after a while. But I'm setting that up. I'm looking at horse trailers. I'm believing God. I'm looking at a four-wheel drive, lift kit, F450, 15,000, 20,000 pound winch, and just start going to towns and out in the counties of the state of Mississippi, and I'll put it on the Internet and just go straight to the people and bypass a lot of these dead church buildings. As a believer, I am the church. And I'm going to go ride around and hand out Handbill saying I'll be preaching in that pasture or that barn at 6 o'clock this evening or tomorrow evening and camp out and cook over an open fire and not spend money on motels and renting buildings because people got to have air conditioning. If you so hung up on some air conditioning that you can't go somewhere and meet out in the pasture and get touched by Jesus, hey, go ahead and stay in your misery because that's what you really desire. Oh, I know people that talk so much about their misery all the time. It's all they talk about is how sick they are all the time. Like it's your best friend. I talk about Isaiah 53. But when I went through such tormenting pain just this past week, I was going to Isaiah 53. By the stripes. By the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. And I mean, I got up this morning, I stretched out, and I had the kids from like 1 o'clock. Till eight o'clock. We were frog hunting at eight o'clock last night. I think I dropped them off at eight forty last night. He said, "Bub, we got to go frog hunting. And we don't kill them. We just catch them. We go with the flashlights and we catch them and then we turn them loose. And uh, we do all kind of stuff. Man, they have so much fun. But listen to me real strong. 
I'm going to the people. I learned, I've been that way for 42 years. I've seen more miracles and healings than Spanky's Barbecue up in Gluckstadt. Out on the sidewalk at Arby's in Canton, on the way deer hunting, camouflage, on, 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 wearing camo and got a, a, a stuff on. And me and my brother laid hands on a black girl that was sick. She just hugged us like we were raised in the same house. The white black thing didn't mean a thing because somebody cared about her. She was sick as a dog. She got touched. My brother, who's Presbyterian, we were backing out in my muddy four-wheel drive. He went, Woo! That did me more good than her. I mean, he, he Presbyterian. He shouted louder than a lot of Pentecostals I've ever heard. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke of bondage. Where does that come from? Spending time with Jesus, not religiously. Not changing the tone of your voice and saying, Dearest thou knowest that God lovest thou. Ah, puke, <coughs> vomit, crap, <laughs> doo-doo. That stuff ain't got any power. It's the anointing. Quit playing games, dear God. Let me, let me read you about a lady that didn't play games. Matthew chapter 5 if you'll go to if you got one of those big bibles you go to the middle and turn to the right and then there's matthew new covenant so, no not matthew it's mark it's in matthew 2 but i'm gonna read it out of mark mark chapter 5 verse 21 and this is two stories blended into one really good man my time this show so easy to do because i mean i'm sharing i look up man my time's gone after Jesus returned from across the lake, a huge crowd of people quickly gathered around him on the shoreline. Now, the question is why they're gathering around him. He said, well, that's Jesus. Well, the word says, as Jesus is, so is David E. Dixon in the earth. I can't believe you said that. I didn't say it. The word said it. So shut the heck up. After Jesus returned from across the lake, a huge crowd of people quickly gathered around him on the shoreline. Just then a man saw that it was Jesus. Woo, look out. So he pushed through the crowd and threw himself down at his feet. Well, I'm just going to be blunt with you. My friend Sean Dean that was in Cuba just the other day. Word spread to what was going on in the meeting. They've had this church that they... This, sponsored them and had them come in they said you're one of the rare churches that come and you minister to people you pray for people you see things happen word spread they heard that Sean Dean was in town you said well why are you giving glory to Sean Dean no I'm not I give the glory to God but he uses us there's a God God's got his part to play and we got our part to play and the Bible says as Jesus is so is David E. Dixon Sean Dean and Mabry in the earth and this woman came because she heard about what was going on. And she said, I came to be healed. And I said, Ooh, when Sean told me that, I was laughing so hard. I said, that woman about to get healed. She and they prayed for her, laid hands on her, gave the command of faith. She just jumped up and started dancing on a broken ankle. Ankle had the x-ray picture on her phone and showed it to him. Woo-hoo-hoo! Here we go. Just then a man saw that it was Jesus. So he pushed through the crowd and threw himself down at his feet. Or I could say when the man saw that it was somebody that was in touch with God. Because Jesus operated as a human being. Yeah, don't tell me what that was Jesus. No, Jesus operated in the earth as a human being. Go, go meditate in Philippians 1 and 2 and 3. And humbled himself into the form of a, of a human being. yick <laughs> Boy, that just messes with religious people's minds because you're too blankety blank lazy to wipe the dust off your Bible. But that ain't us. We're part of the remnant. We we are the, of those who are separate. Come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Don't mean we're isolated, but we seek God. Oh, I've been persecuted more for seeking God and ridicule. And I got I know people. Boy, they talk about how great David Dixon is. And I get around them, they sweat and they're so nervous. They're so nervous. They're just chickens. Because they know they watch TV and they don't spend time praying. Ain't nothing wrong with watching some television. I love me some good TV shows. But I do incorporate prayer into my life. 
not out of works. I tell you what, I'm better. I'm better at what I do because I pray. Just then, a man saw that it was Jesus, so he pushed through the crowd. That's where a lot of people stop right there. <laughs> yeah, stay in your misery, then you dummy. He pushed himself through the crowd and threw himself down at Jesus' feet. His name was Jairus, a Jewish official who was in charge of the synagogue. Well, here's the head, the guy in charge of the freaking synagogue. He pleaded with Jesus. Saying over and over, please come with me. My little daughter is at the point of death. This is really good. And she's only 12 years old. Come and lay your hands on her and heal her and she will live. Ooh, what? look at what this man's saying. Immediately, Jesus went with him. You press God about your situation and immediately he'll go with you. And if you're, if you're a believer already, he's already on the inside of you. Immediately, Jesus went with him and the huge crowd followed, pressing in on him from all sides now here we go faith is now now faith is Hebrews 11 1 you can say it either way it works either way you say it faith is now right now don't think about it don't wait till you get a super good feeling now faith is now in the crowd that day was a woman who had suffered horribly from continued bleed, continual bleeding for 12 years she had endured a great deal under the care of various doctors. Now, I just, I have some doctor friends. I have the, I have the most, the utmost respect for them. And, I, and I, I, I'm so grateful for doctors. I know some that are jerks, just like I know a lot of preachers that are jerks too. And I'm certain that I've been a jerk in my uh, different times. Of course, there's some people think I'm a jerk all the time. Well, knock yourself out. She had endured a great deal under the care of various doctors, yet in spite of spending all she had on their treatments, she was not getting better but worse. And boy, is that rampant. But the same thing with preachers too. When she heard about Jesus' healing power, which is here, still here today, she pushed through the, through the crowd. Here comes somebody pushing through the crowd again. And came up from behind him and touched his prayer shawl. For she kept saying to herself, see, songs have been written about the hem of his garment or the prayer shawl that she touched. He ain't had a stinking thing to do with it. This is what everything had to do with. For she kept saying to herself, if I can only touch his clothes, if I, if I can only touch his clothes, it was the act of touching his clothes she said, if only I can touch his clothes, I know that I will be healed. There wasn't any special healing power in Jesus' clothes. It was in the fact that she said out of her mouth, if I can only touch his clothes. And then she acted upon it because she believed it in her heart. Romans 10, 8, 9, and 10 says, for what say it that the word is near you even in your mouth and in your heart? That if you'll say Jesus is Lord, well, I say Jesus is Lord. And if you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. And that's not just fire insurance to keep you out of hell. That's healing for your body. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be blunt with you. I pulled this muscle the other day, one of the most, I can't remember pain being so bad in my body. And I knew if I went to the doctor, they were going to give me muscle relaxers. And I finally went and they gave me muscle relaxers. <laughs> And to be honest, they did, they hardly even worked. I hope you listen to me. But I tell you what did work was every day, every day, Isaiah 53, 1 Peter 2, 24. And here I stand before you whole. And I give the glory to God. But I had my part to play. Oh, the enemy hates me. Satan is so scared of me. And I'm, I'm the devil's mad and I'm glad. As soon as her hand touched him... Her bleeding immediately stopped. She knew it, for she could feel her body instantly being healed of her disease. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. 
Jesus knew at once that someone had touched him. For he felt the power that always surged around him had passed through him for someone to be healed. He turned and spoke to the crowd saying, Who touched my clothes? I'm going to read that again. We got a little extra time here. We're good. Jesus knew at once that someone had touched him. For he felt the power that always surged around him had passed through him, had passed through him, had passed through him for someone to be healed. He turned and spoke to the crowd saying, Who touched my clothes? The disciples answered, What do you mean, who touched you? Look at this huge crowd. They're all pressing up against you. Here is on staff. Can't even see what happened here. Boy, I hope you're listening to me. See, the culprit is doubt and unbelief. And most churches are full of doubt and unbelief. Not all of them. And, and, and even ministries and ministers that have been used mightily of God in the earth, either their wife or their husband or their kids or those around them were like wet blankets constantly trying to put them out. Well, what about this? Well, what about that? Well, how did doubt and unbelief work in the garden? Did God say? Did God say that by the stripes of Jesus you were healed? Really? Well, no, that's not really real. Let me just go with what this one says, or with that, with what that one says. Yeah, go ahead and follow that crap, and you'll end up in misery. But I just can't go with that. Fine, stay in your misery. You see, this word is believed on in the heart. It's discerned spiritually, not mentally. And that just eats some people alive. Well, get over yourself. Get in this, meditate in it. Meditation puts the word in your heart. Memorization puts it in your head. No power when it comes out of your head. Boy, I just said something. His disciples answered, What do you mean who touched you? Look at this huge crowd. They're all pressing up against you. But Jesus' eyes swept across the crowd, looking for the one who had touched him for healing. And the, when the woman who had experienced this miracle realized what had happened to her, she came before him, trembling with fear. Because she was told, you can't do this. She'd been told over and 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 over again, you cannot do this. Religion, religion's a powerful force in the earth. That's what I say to religion. Right there, even if it's in your church. I'm going to trust God, not your stupid religion and your stupid rituals where you got to wear a coat and a suit and a tie for the anointing to come on you. That is stupidity gone on a rampage. I'm standing here with my shorts. My grandson said yesterday, he said, Sir Bub, I can see your butt. I realized I had ripped, I forgot to rip my shorts because I got an interior thing on that covers it, but... But I mean, I, one, I got a little extra air conditioning back here. I'm standing out here preaching to you with, with shorts that are ripped open in the back end. Of course, ain't nobody back in to see anything. I just don't care. Tradition has made the word of God of none effect. You go, you, some of you going to be in church this morning. And if somebody don't show up dressed nice, you're going to look at them and criticize them. And that attitude be damned. To hell with that attitude. You know, the number one reason a lot of people say they won't go to church because they ain't got clothes good enough to, to match up to you stupid religious people that are hung up on being looking nice at church on Sunday morning. That is stupidity gone on a rampage. You say, well, Dave, you just lost me. No, I never had you. I never had you to lose you. You know, my biggest concern is not what you think about me, is that when I start riding my horse around these towns, is do I get a big enough poop bag to keep the horse from crapping on the street and get arrested by the popo? (laughs) (laughs) 
Oh, boy. Jesus' eyes swept the crowd, looking for the one who had touched him for healing. Here we go. When the woman who experienced this miracle realized what had happened to her, she came before him, trembling with fear, and threw herself down at his feet, saying, I was the one who touched you. Woo! And she told him her story of what had just happened. Then Jesus said to her, Daughter, because you dared to believe, your faith has healed you. Go with peace in your heart and be free from your suffering. Oh, you know who my heroes are? People that dare to believe. In spite of what your friends say. Oh, my family. Close family. Friends. They call me the crazy uncle. Well, I dare you to die. And then be raised from the dead and come back and call me crazy. I dare you to. God don't call me crazy. Jesus don't call me crazy. Holy Spirit don't call me crazy. But because I don't fit in your little stupid religious cubicle or your little square. Because I don't fit in what you are used to doing. This woman dared to go beyond what she was used to doing and what she'd been told. She'd been told to stand down all her life. I've been told to calm down and stand down all my life. But, but I found this out. When I'm bold as a lion, I get results. And the, of course, the enemy, the enemy is the author of sickness and disease. If you ain't got that yet, you don't meditate in the Word. Satan is the author of sickness and disease. John 10.10 10 says, But for the, steve, the thief cometh but for to steal, kill, and to destroy. I have come to bring life and life more abundant. In fact, I, this doctor I went to... Uh, this past, uh, this week it's called Abundant and I I thought well that ain't the whole name but that's how it starts off and I thought I wonder if they're believers then I got there and I saw the scriptures and they're in there laughing wasn't anything like a doctor's clinic I had, I've never had more fun going to it you know I walked in and said hey I'm here for the free lunch coupon <laughs> they were like oh you just it just ended five minutes ago we're laughing so hard and, and I mean and I got some relief too Thank God for them. Thank God for doctors, man. But I'm going to tell you something. I trust Jesus more than I do any doctor or any medicine or any opinion. Say it after me. Say, Jesus is Lord. Say, I choose to believe in my heart. Jesus, you died for me. And God, you raised Jesus from the dead. He loves you so much. I got to go so I can come back. I'll be right back in just a minute. Back again. I, I, I want to encourage you. I, I got I got family members that ooh just wanted to trash me, and then I just I said I'm just going to walk in love. And I served them, helped them, been there for them in their darkest moments. And they've watched me. And now they're like, if you mess with me, you might as well go kill them because they're coming to get your butt. You might as well give your heart to Jesus because your butt belongs to them. Uh, some of my hardest times, I watched my family <clears throat> show up there and stand by me. They were ready to kill on my behalf. I've had people call me a racist before, and I can line up hundreds of black people that will testify under oath on my behalf. Oh, yeah, I've led more black people to Jesus than most black ministers I know that want to holler about racism every time they turn around. And and I'm going to tell you something. I've been around. I've seen people that are in the Ku Klux Klan when I was young. And I've seen big black people that are always screaming about how hurt they are. And I tell you what, love will operate through anybody that yields to it. And hatred will operate through anybody who yields to it. I don't give a rat's behind what your color is. The blood of Jesus was shed for every one of us. And I see you through the eyes of Jesus. I see you hurting no more. I see the rescue he provided for you. So come on. The water's fine. Jump in. Forget about how hurt you've been. Forget about how badly everybody has treated you. You ain't got the corner on the market for going through stuff. 
Say it after me. Say, Jesus is Lord. Say, I choose to believe that Jesus, you died for me. And I believe that God, you raised Jesus from the dead on my behalf. I believe and I receive in Jesus' name. Look, I still cuss. <laughs> I still pick my nose. I was, I mean, I, when I went through this ordeal last week, man, there was some things just didn't get done. Other, you know, working, working. I had to get that sucker out of there. <laughs> but I know Jesus, and I'm getting to know Him progressively, more and more every day. And He loves me. He know. He knew. He knew for. Hey, him. I want to throw this little episode in on how to partner and help this ministry out. The word partner is one who takes part with another to do something. And I know a bunch of you want to take part with me to help me do something. What are we doing? We're doing discipling and evangelism. We're doing discipling especially through prayer, 4.30 every morning of the week till for about an hour to an hour and a half, Monday through Friday, 11.30 to 1 p.m., we have, we have a bunch of folks praying daily. And the best way to disciple is somebody is through prayer and teaching of the Word and equipping. And another thing we're doing is evangel- evangelizing just like through this show. And we're reaching people one-on-one and through meetings. And there's a lot of fruit. And we're having a whole lot of fun. I want to read you a scripture. Remember, a stingy planter gets a stingy crop. A lavish planter gets a lavish crop. I want each of you to take plenty of time to think it over and make up your own mind. This is a scripture. What you will give. That will protect you against sob stories. And I just don't know we're going to make it and you don't help us. I'm in my 42nd year. And uh, I ain't had to beg and I ain't had to sob for your money. This will protect you against sob stories and arm twisting. God loves it when the giver delights in the giving. Tell you a real quick story about a young man that came to us, started praying with us. He was scared to get a job because he'd get around the crew again and get back on drugs. He temporarily went back on drugs, came off, and he will tell you the thing that has helped him more than anything else. He prays with us daily. He became a youth pastor. The, the, the great fruit, and he's been off of drugs, and he'll tell you the best thing that ever helped him was daily prayer, daily in the Word with us, and in growing with a group that loves him. So that's just one of the stories, some of the fruit. There's many more, and we'll share others. Thank you for helping. I know you want to. It's High Noon with David. He's gone and fallen in love with Jesus and bringing boldness to the body of Christ. Here's David.